Hi, I'm Patsy Pabalan. Three months from now, climate negotiators will gather in Paris for the climate conference, where hopefully they will finalize an agreement so that we can slow down the impacts of climate change. Leading us at the forefront is Rachel Kite, World Bank Group's Vice President and Special Envoy for Climate Change. She has a pretty cool title because she is. So let's meet her now. So, Rachel, the international community is um, going to, you know, try to finalize an agreement so that we don't reach uh, or go beyond the two degree warming. But a lot of us don't really understand what two degree warming really means. What is it? So, uh, six years ago, uh, the international community agreed that we should, as you just said, not allow uh, GHG emissions to continue to the point where the planet would warm two degrees above pre-industrial levels. Two degrees um, can be quite devastating for the oceans. Uh, for the amount of uh, temperature change could affect uh, fishing patterns and, and coral reefs. Uh, two degrees, uh, we're already seeing that uh, parts of the oceans are warming more than others. So in the northwest Pacific, off the coast of the mm. Philippines, it's much warmer than uh, than elsewhere. You know, th this brings volatile weather, extreme weather events. It brings spots of heat and spots of rainfall, which are very difficult to manage. So mm -hmm. two degrees is it is where we should stop the the that is where we're trying to negotiate for right. but two degrees is dangerous in and of itself right. well let's talk about the conference in Paris compared to other negotiations in the past what makes this one different I think in the past people were very fixed on a sort of a global number you know that emissions will reach either this or we will stop uh, emissions at this point, that we will have um, a, a global binding treaty to which everybody will um, adhere. That's really not on the table in the same way in Paris. In Paris we're expecting to have bottom-up commitments mm -hmm. and then negotiated language which provides uh, a framework into which everybody's actions must fit. So countries are submitting plans, they're called uh, in, um, intended nationally determined contributions. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have a finance package, there is a negotiation of a text, and there are what we call the action agenda where civil society and science and business and government are coming together on issues which are important to them and saying, we're going to do this okay. outside of the convention. What does a strong climate deal look like? What are we hoping for? really uh, ambitious agreements about how far and fast we will drive carbon out of our economy. Real commitments to support technically and with financial support those who are the most vulnerable. Real support to cities that they can uh, become uh, centers of innovation and competitiveness and jobs but do so in a way that people can breathe and that they're competitive and they have less carbon in their economies. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a transformation of agriculture. We have to provide nutrition and food security to people while coping with climate change and without bringing more emissions into the landscape. What role does the World Bank Group play in all of this? So our role is as the, organi the development finance organisation that will be there for you not just today, not just as we were 20 years ago, but in 20 years' time, in 25 years' time, with technical solutions, with knowledge of what's working elsewhere mm -hmm. in the world, and with flexible financing to help you get there. So, you know, countries are going to experience extreme weather events. They're going to experience transformations in their, in their landscape. They're going to experience... Um, uh, they're going to experience the dislocation perhaps in some parts of society mm -hmm. as jobs grow in the clean and green parts of the economy and perhaps jobs start to disappear in, in heavier industry and uh, those that are dependent upon carbon in an old way. We are the organisation that will be with you through this transformation and we must be good enough to be able to provide you with some of the solutions that might work for you. Well, thank you so much for your time, Rachel. I mean, my country, the Philippines, has suffered Typhoon Haiyan, and I refuse to have a future that our communities will be vulnerable each year to these calamities. So you have my support. Okay. Thanks so much. You have mine too.